Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast, where we practice facts over feelings, because we don't give a shit about your feelings right about now. It's all about facts. And I already know that there are people that are going to say that that was one of the greatest basketball games that they've ever seen in game five of the WNBA finals. Ladies and gentlemen, if you think that was one of the greatest basketball games that you've ever seen in your life, tonight, game five of the WNBA finals, you should never watch basketball again. But before I jump in, thank you to our, our, our followers and our subscribers for your continued support of our channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell. Also, become a member. It's only $2.99. I hate shilling for it, but I want to build it up, and I want to do stuff that's specifically for members. But if there are no members, not, not, not really anyone to do it for. <laughs> so I do want to have members-only uh, lives and stuff like that. So as we get membership, then we can do lives for just members. So, yeah, please consider it. We greatly appreciate you. And, of course, once again, jump on over to my other page, Rudy's Rant, on YouTube and subscribe there. And, of course... You know what to do. Ring that bell. Subscribe over here. <clears throat> Let's jump on in on that absolutely atrocious excuse for a game five deciding game of the WNBA finals that saw the New York Liberty have the league office pack in a box, put in a bow, and deliver a gift for a WNBA championship tonight. 67-62 in overtime. Folks, this game was horrible. This game was bad. This game sucked. The, the New York Liberty had 27 points at halftime. At halftime. The Minnesota Lynx scored 26 points in the second half. The Minnesota Lynx scored Two points in overtime. The Liberty scored seven, and there's your ball game. But there's so much more to unpack about this absolutely dreadful experience that I had to put myself through so I could actually in, speak about it in an educated manner because I saw it before my eyes. I did watch pretty much every game of this series, um, except for game one. I saw the end of it. And I watched awful basketball, and people said it was great. And then I watched game two, and I watched awful basketball. People said it was great. And then I watched game three, and again, I watched awful basketball. People said it was great. And then game four, again, awful basketball. People said it was great. If you thought this shit was great, you, have, you need some therapy. <clears throat> Let me put it to you like this. Sabrina Ionescu. Shot one for 19, and they won. Brianna Stewart was four for 15, and they won. They combined to go five of 34. Five of 34, and the New York Liberty won despite their two top players <laughs> making five baskets out of 34 attempts. If anyone ever puts Sabrina Ionesco in the same conversation with Caitlin Clark ever again, I will vomit. She can't hold Caitlin Clark's sports bra. Sabrina Ionesco sucks. Brianna Stewart sucks. And they won the championship. Obviously, I'm being a bit hyperbolic. They don't suck, but they suck. They sucked this series, both of them. They were terrible, both of them. You want series numbers for these two? <clears throat> Sabrina Ionescu, 24 of 81. 29.6% from the field. 
Brianna Stewart, 31 of 95, 32.6% from the field. That's utterly an abomination. They won a game where they shot as a team 30.6% from the field and two of 23 from three-point range. Why? Because the WNBA greased this shit for them. This was the most obvious example of a rigged basketball game if I've seen one in my life. And I hate going that direction, but the officiating in WNBA basketball is so bad that it could only lead you to one belief. This shit is rigged. It's rigged. If you watched, I got notes. I didn't take notes for the duration of the game. I'm not my boy Ben Daniel who, who takes notes all game. But I, this is these are the notes that I took. Just this, these are the notes I took just from the final seven minutes because the game was a, still a was a two three point game. And I'm like, let's see what happens. I'm gonna take notes, <clears throat> and I'm gonna have specifics. First half, Minnesota jumps out. They're up 12. They're, they're winning the battle. The Liberty looks shook. They look shook. They look like they're, they're, they're tight. They look scared. They can't make a bucket. They are shitting on themselves. They got 23 points with a, less than a minute to go in the first half. And then the officials step in and try their best to make it get even. Um, first half, six fouls called on the Liber on the Lynx. Uh, I believe it was zero called on New York. But let me check. My mistake, and I correct myself. First half, Minnesota Lynx, seven fouls. The Liberty had two fouls calling. Two. Now, for those of you who don't really watch this, the New York Liberty play a bully brand of ball. They play a very physical basketball. They play very physical basketball. Basketball that emulates the New York Knicks and the Miami Heat from the 90s. It's it's a physical style of ball that is it's fouling. It's it, let's let's let's, chant, let's just be what it is. Say what it is. It's fouling. They foul constantly, and they got called for two fouls in the first half. Two. Whereas the Lynx get called for seven. <clears throat> it is interesting to say the least how how one team can have such a discrepancy. For, for such a large portion of the game, but then the officials try to even it out later because at the end of the day, it was 21 to 17 and fouls called. Going into the final minute of the third quarter, the foul count was 14-5 for the, for the Liberty, which is why they ended up with 25 free throws and the Lynx end up with eight. Let's put in another perspective here. The Lynx shot 70 shots. They shot 37.1% from the field. They took 19 threes. So that means they took 51 twos. The Liberty shot 72 shots, 23 threes. So, in fact, they shot 49 twos. So the team that shot more twos took less free throws. That's where we're at. The team that took, took, less, two, took less twos got more free throws. They got more free throws because they got calls that – Absolutely ridiculous, comparatively. The Liberty foul constantly, non-stop. But then you have the referee calls a travel with like 10 seconds to go in the first half on the links where all the girl was doing was doing a, hand, a dribble handoff and they called traveling. It's the travels that you know these travels, folks. I know you, you, you who have been with me for a minute. You know these travels. These are the travels that they call on Caitlin Clark, where she come, where she's dribbling the ball up the floor and comes to a stop, and they just decide we're going to whistle travel. Really, had no impact on the play whatsoever. But we're going to whistle travel, mind you. We'll allow traveling by Brianna Stewart to happen every single time she does it, and not call anything. This game was frustrating for me because one, I admit, I wanted the Lynx to win. I I like Nafisa Collier. She frustrates me with how she plays at times, but I like her. I think she's a nice person. She seems to be a genuine person. Um, not a fan of Cheryl Reeve by any means, but 
you have one team that plays a more attractive style of basketball and one that plays a bully brand of basketball. And one team that is just so much bigger than the other. Look, the Liberty are big. Like they're just a big team comparatively to the to the Lynx. They're a big team compared to most teams. And they won the they won the battle of the boards, of course, 44 to 33, 9 to 4 on the offensive glass. But it gets to the point where you're watching this and you're seeing them body them up at midcourt, literally shoving them, shoving them over and over and over. Courtney Williams at one point is dribbling the ball up the floor. She's at half court, and Phoebus just flat pushes her to the ground, no less. And they don't call foul. I thought they were going to call back court on her, actually. <laughs> they don't, don't call foul. But let's let's jump into the end of the game. And then I'll move back to the beginning. <clears throat> to the beginning of where I started with the with the fourth quarter. <clears throat> the Minnesota Lynx have the ball. And Collier, the Liberty decide they're not going to foul. And Collier gets all the way to the basket for a wide open layup and she misses and she misses and it's real it's really it's really saddening because the links outplayed the liberty they outplayed them that's not saying much because the liberty played probably as poorly as a team could play in a situation like this and then miraculously come away with a victory the Lynx did not play great, but the Liberty played like absolute dog shit. And at the same time, the Lynx just, they did outplay the Liberty. Now, Collier gets to the rim, point blank layup, misses it. 6.3 seconds to go, Liberty grabbed the rebound. And of course, that was a risky proposition for the Liberty because if she makes that layup, the game is probably over. Instead, it's still a two-point game, 60 to 58. What made this really bad was that in the in the huddle, Coach for Liberty, Sandy Brondello, is telling her team, embell if they foul you, embellish it. Well, I, I don't, I'm not mad at that because I know that's what people do, but it 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 goes to show the psychology of what was going on with this team. They couldn't hit shots. Their only way to get to, to score in their minds was probably to get to the free throw line because they were all missing. The only person that made shots for the most part was John Claude Jones and um, Leone Fibich. And then, of course, uh, Sabali off the bench. But they weren't, they couldn't hit shots. They couldn't hit, they couldn't hit anything, especially Brown Stewart and, and, and Sabrina Ionescu. But on the inbound play, Brianna Stewart clearly traveled as soon as she got the ball she traveled everyone saw it everyone saw it even to the point where people who i don't otherwise care for were saying that minnesota got screwed she takes a couple dribbles alana smith is standing there waiting hands are straight up in the air straight in the air and brianna stewart just puts her shoulder right into her chest now Realistically, that could have been an offensive foul. Instead, because of the way she bummed her, they, they put her shoulder right to her chest, Smith's arms come down a bit because she got just got hit right in the gut. Even that said, her hands never touched Brianna Stewart. Never. Even on the angles that you see that, that, that are floating around, her hand never touched Brianna Stewart's arm. It was in the middle. It was between her hands. Brianna Stewart bricks the shot, and they call a foul. A foul that clearly wasn't a foul. But a foul that wasn't a foul, and then on top of the fact that you didn't call traveling literally less than a second before that. And that's what makes it so bad. They have a, a review system. They review the play, and you knew they weren't going to overturn this. There's no way the officials in New York were going to overturn this. They were going to milk this shit for as long as they can milk it. They're under, I, I believe it's completely rigged at this point. I, I'm genuinely, I believe this shit is rigged. I, it, it, it's more rigged, it, it's more rigged than the NBA is, that's for dang sure. Because if the Liberty just play semi-decently today, they win by 20. By 20. 
if Sabrina is just serviceable, they win by 20. If you're talking, she went one for 19. If she goes six of 19, this is a 12 to 15 point game. If Brianna Stewart goes seven of 15, not four of 15, the end of the six, this, this is a 20 point game. If the Liberty played just in a decent manner. But, in my opinion, this is completely rigged. The officials are in on it. The league is in on it. There's not a way in the there's no way in the world that you looked at that play in replay and decided that Alana Smith wasn't positioned properly. So first off, I'm gonna give you the Collier miss. And then get to that other bucket. So as you see, it's 60-58. There's 16.4 seconds. They're not fouling. I was actually surprised Liberty didn't foul here. I really thought they foul. I think that might have surprised uh, Cheryl Reeve. And, and honestly, I thought Cheryl Reeve probably should have called a timeout. It's so my opinion. If, if they're not going to foul, I'd probably call a timeout. And I guess probably the reason she didn't call a timeout is because these teams are so bad at inbound in the basketball that they don't call a timeout because they're afraid they're going to get it stolen. But I call timeout here, and I'm gonna call timeout here. Why? Because I want to get what I want the play that I want. I want to have the ball in the person right hand, the, the hands of the right person. Now, at the end of the day, the, the ball ended up in the right person's hands, and you can't ask for a much better look than that. But uh, but it's one of those things where it's me psychologically. So let's show this real quick. As you see right here, Williams letting it wind. Williams can go daggers. So right here, she has her beat. Look at Brianna Stewart. She's going the wrong direction. You can see her right here. She's she's coming this way. And Fisa Khan is going to go right around her, get right to the rim, and then blow the layup. Seeking. She's beat. She's already beat. Already beat. Collier rummaging in. Can't finish. It's a bunny. It's a bunny. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm literally sad right now watching this. I'm literally sad watching this. It's like she saw John Quell Jones, but like she wasn't – to do anything, she's not gonna foul you, and they can't foul you. They foul you, you're going to line, and it's a four point game. Like, right here, look at this. Robert. Look at this, it's a point, it's a wide open layup. In. It's a can't wide open finish. layup. Stewart. It's crazy because Nafisa Collier made her layups for most of the game. For most of the game, she made her layups until that one, until the most important one of her, of the, of her career. I like Collier, she choked, she, she choked her ass off. But then let's get to the next part where we are going to see this absolute embarrassment right here. Let's take a look. You have, you have Leon Fibich right here. You got Brianna Stewart here being guarded by Collier, John Quell Jones, Courtney Williams is guarding Fibich. Kevin McBride's on a UNESCO. Um, uh, that's Carlton who's on um, Thornton, I think, or is that Laney Hamilton? I don't know which one that is. I couldn't tell you. But <clears throat> on the clock, they added a little time. New York. So that's Thornton actually on the bot. That's Thornton right here. So watch when when watch when uh, Brianna gets this ball. Brianna gets the ball. Down two championship in the balance. Cutting green gets it in. Right there, she's wide open. Just right here, bobbles the ball. Stewart, Stewart. That's a travel. That's a travel. She fucking she fucking traveled. And tell me again about this position. I see a I see a player with perfect position. I see a player with perfect position. Championship in the balance. Thebish gets it in to Stewart. Stewart catch. How is that bad position? Please tell me how this is not defensive position. Look at right here. Look at her come off, number eight. That's Alana Smith. To Stewart. Stewart. She's waiting for her. She's literally waiting for her. So all of a sudden, in the, in the WNBA, when you allow fouls to go the entire game, and now at this point of the game, you have something like this that would not have been called, would, would not, would not have been called a foul in the first quarter. See, this is the funny part. People say, well, you know, it's a foul in the first half. If it's a foul, if it, why if it's a foul in the first quarter, it's a foul in the fourth quarter, right? And I would say yes. 
And I will tell you that this is not a foul in the first quarter. Never. She's waiting. Catches. Brianna Stewart just jumps right into her. Can't hit for the I don't even know what the foul they called was. That's what makes it so bad. In fact, they called it after the, the shot was missed. To Stewart. Watch, watch this guy right here. Stewart catches. Look at this motherfucker right here. Look at him. Look at him. He has not called the foul. He has not called the foul. The foul happened already, right? Right? Wait. What? You notice? He ain't called a foul yet. Ball's in the air. He ain't called a foul. She ain't called a foul. They're all watching. He calls a foul when he sees that ball ain't going in. This man called a foul when he saw the ball was not going in. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. This is not a no motherfucker. You're you're on the tape. Yeah, number nine official. You're on you're on the tape. This game is rigged. This is a rigged job. This you cannot sit here and tell me. I'm gonna watch we can watch it in speed motion again. Championship in the balance. Thebish gets it in to Stewart. Stewart catches, leaves. Dude, this is some horse shit. It, it, this is making me even more mad than when I saw it live. That motherfucker raised his arm literally after the ball is halfway in the air and says it's a foul. You can see the look on their faces. Look at the look on the face of Connor's face. They're like, what the hell are you talking about? Oh, my God. And then they say she didn't have position? She was standing there waiting. Bro, this is such a bad call. Th this is such a bad call. This is egregious in nature. This is a screw job. If you're into wrestling and you know about WWE and the Montreal screw job, this is the Brooklyn screw job. This is the Brooklyn screw job because the Minnesota Lynx just got screwed in Brooklyn. Fucking screwed. I mean, you can't be serious. Hit for the foul. And Brianna Stewart. This is horseshit, bro. This is so bad. And then they'll show the replays here. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. Th th let me find the replay. Look at, look at this. Where's the foul? He hasn't called a foul yet. She's already banged into her, pushed off, threw her shoulder in her chest. Right here, you can look at the hands. Look at the hands. Angle, look. Here, this is the perfect angle. Look at this. Like She's standing there, bro. That's, a posi that's perfect defensive position. She catches the arm of... Catches the arm. Stewart throws her body into her. What if she catches the arm? See, Ryan Rucco is a fraud. All right, bro? Ryan Rucco and Rebecca Lover are part of this conspiracy of bullshit. The, 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 the commentators are part of the conspiracy. This is horseshit. My arm is in the air. You jump into my arm, and that's a foul on me? My arm is in the air. I, I can't. Where am I supposed to put my arms? They're straight up in the air. You jump, and your left arm hits my armpit? Which, because you bowed me in the chest, my arms came down a little because you bowed me right in my chest? Come on, man. This is horse shit. Stewart. And then look right here. She never touches Brenna Stewart's hand. Never. Never. Look. Right here. She never touches her hand. This is a, this is a disgrace. They look at this. Where is the foul? Where is the foul? This is an off-balance bad shot by a player who sucked. For two straight games, completely was complete and utter trash. And, and honestly, you could say for four of the five, she was horrendous. Horrendous. But they're going to sit here and, and sing her praises. This is not a foul. This is not a foul in no world. They got, they got, they got fucked. I mean, the, the links got fucked. They got fucked. This is horrible. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I don't know. Now, now you say I don't know. Right, Bro, this is a massive call. Here's the one where it looks like maybe. Dude, how, you see how she bangs right into her stomach? She banged into her. She Because of her force, that pushed Alana Smith back. That's a charge. 
but you're definitely not calling him a defensive foul here. You can't. That right hand. Her right hand never touched Brianna Stewart's arm. Her right hand was in between them. You see from the other angle. It never touched her. The not question. to mention, you notice this guy still hasn't gone. Is, is there enough Look to overturn? That right hand is not touching Brianna Stewart. That right hand is in between her arms. It's not touching anything. This is a fuck job. And the, the, the ref right there doesn't call shit. He saw this guy, this bald headed dude. Yeah, I, 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 mm, I'd be looking at him. I'd be, I'd be wondering what he put in this game. We are inconclusive. Is it the lower body? No. Brandon Stewart's one who initiates on the lower half. There we go. Is it the lower body? No. There was no. But, it, but then they said that she wasn't in defensive position. Look at how far it was before he put his arm up. His arm is up now. It just went up. The ball was right here when his arm went up. Man, this shit reminds me of the Miami Hurricanes, Ohio State National Championship, where the referee called, uh, the official called a pass interference about seven or eight seconds after the play was over and the Hurricane players had thrown their helmets in the air. They're all on the field celebrating. And then he throws his flag. But you want to know the difference? I'm a Hurricanes fan. I arguably, I arguably could see that it was pass interference. I just don't think you call it eight seconds late. If you called it on the spot, I, I'd have no argument with you because I thought it was very – it was bang, bang. I thought it could be called – if it, it, it was – if it had been called, I, I'd have very little argument against it. What it did, though, to the Miami Hurricanes in that situation is that mentally they went from here – to, oh shit, we gotta do this again. And then they're losing the game. It's mental at that point. It's a mental situation, and it cost them the freaking game. This situation, you could probably argue the same thing. Minnesota sees them about themselves about to win the championship, and they get this bullshit called on them. And like, oh my god, you gotta be kidding me! You gotta be kidding me! There's so many layers here, Brianna. And because she blew the he blew the whistle, no one went for the rebound. So you don't know where the ball would have gone. But where it bounced, Courtney Williams was probably in the best position to grab it. That was a shit call. That was a straight shit call. And, and quite frankly, as far as I'm concerned, that just completely, if, if you had any thoughts as to the, the integrity of the WNBA, you just saw the integrity of the league is not existent. To sit here and say that her body position was not the, was not proper, bro, you're out of your fucking mind. But let's go look now at the last seven minutes of this goddamn game because this game was really so aggravating to watch. It's 47-46 on a um, – John Quill Jones gets a layup off of a push-off that she didn't get called for. She pushed the girl off. It's 49-46 now. Um, Feebich misses a wide-open layup. Then McBride hits a layup, um, making 49-48. McBride then hits um, uh, Natasha Heidman off of um, a Sabrina brick from three. I mean, one of Sabrina's many bricks from three. She hits her. She's got the. She gets the ball on the left side of the court. I mean, it was the slowest developing fast break you've ever seen in your life. Heidman's, you know, going down the court and uh, she hits her for the layup to make it fifty to forty nine. It's five thirty to go in the game. That was a nice pass. Um, then there was a jump ball. Liberty ball. Uh, Sabrina misses another another one from the corner. So then then Stewart blocks uh, Natasha Heidman's jump shot. Feebich gets a layup. It's 51-50 with 4:30 left. And uh, Heidman misses a three from the corner. See, this is where I get a little confusing for me. And, and this is something that bugs me a lot about how the the Lynx play. Uh, they seem to forget who their best player is, or their two best players are. In fact, no one on this team should have taken a shot in the last. 10 minutes of that game, if their name wasn't Nafisa Collier or Kevin McBride. And that would be only reason to not have them take the shot is if someone's wide open for a layup. Because I didn't trust, you wouldn't have trusted anybody to make a shot today with how bad they all were. But Heidemann became the person who wants to shoot the ball in the final five minutes, just like Courtney Williams was in overtime where she literally shot them out of the game. So Heidman misses the corner three. Um, Feebich drives, gets fouled, makes two free throws at 350 to go, 348. And then McBride hits a layup to make it 
Sabrina, she hits her first shot and only shot of the game with 308 left. A three from the wing. And, of course, you know, they wanted to celebrate it like she did something special, considering at that time she was one for 14. Um, congratulations, Sabrina. You didn't go over. You didn't go over 19. Congrats. Um, they go 56-52. They go Nafisa Collar comes back down with a layup to make it uh, with 250 left, make it 56-54. Uh, Sabrina misses another three. She grabs her own offensive rebound. Then it runs a back door to Brianna Stewart. Where Nafisa Collier lost Brianna Stewart back door, 58-54. Liberty with 220 left. And there was a foul on Thornton, a clear foul where she's hammering the, the player and, of course, acting like she didn't do anything. Thornton plays a bully ball, and they let her get away with it the whole game. They let her get away with it. She was guarding Nafisa Collier. I mean, there was a possession where she fouled Collier five times on the same possession with the ball in her hand uh, uh, until they finally called it on the fifth on the fifth foul. Um. So they were in the bonus at that point on that foul by Thornton. So Kayla McBride got two free throws, 58-56. Stewart takes a three from the corner. She bricks it uh, again. And then uh, Nafisa Collier gets a driving layup on Brianna Stewart. Makes it 58-58 with 135 left. Liberty ball. John Paul Jones misses a layup. Um, it's out on Brianna Stewart with 122. Nafisa Collier hits a reverse layup to make it 60-58 with a minute left. And this is where you're thinking, okay, maybe they're maybe the Lynch will pull this thing off if they just make a couple of buckets, you know, and just be careful with the ball. But of course, it's too easy. Brianna Stewart gets to the free throw line with 38.2, and she bricks both free throws. She choked her ass off again, folks, just like she did in game one. She choked her ass off. And she got away with it. Sabrina Ionescu, they grab the rebound, though, and Sabrina misses another wide open three. And there's a jump ball with 33 seconds left. <clears throat> Rather than actually have a jump ball, the uh, Lynx decide to take a violation, which basically gives the ball out of bounds to the Liberty because the jump ball was between Courtney Williams and John Quell Jones, which means that John Quell Jones is probably going to grab an easy rebound, get, get, get an easy tip and win the, and win the tip. <clears throat> um, after the jump ball, Sabrina misses another three. Corner three, and the Liberty decide they're not going to foul, which led to the video I showed you of Nafisa Collier's missed layup, and then Stewart's travel, blah, 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 blah. And on the final possession, this is this one really kind of bugged me a little bit as well because it's one of those things where you can easily, you you can easily get a much better shot than this. And it's a little frustrating because you just you this you could get a much better shot than this. Let me show you the shot. I mean, this shot from Kayla McBride. I don't like it. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? It it, it makes it's one of those it makes no sense types of shots. So you see right here, you got Courtney Williams. You got I think uh, I don't even know who that is. Nafisa Collier, McBride, that might be – that's Carol, That's Carlton. That's probably Alana Smith right here, Carlton. So you'll see right here in this play that McBride, McBride's going to pop out. She'll be right here, and she's going to have uh, – uh, so one of them was flying at her. I think it was 22 was flying at her. 22 flies at her. It, it, and remember, 5.2 seconds left, folks. 5.2. You can see it right here in the bottom right. Um, but let's jump on in. Game five, a title on the line. Will it be a win or overtime? You were killing Look at look at this. John Quell Jones and Brianna Stewart are both going with Nafisa Collier to the corner. Kayla McBride is going to pop out right here. I believe it was Collier that I, I mean, not Collier. Um, John Quell Jones who jumps back to contest. This situation here, I swear to God, if Kayla McBride just pump fakes, pump fake. You got five seconds left. Just pump fake. You pump fake that either John Quell Jones is gonna land gonna land on your ass, one, and you jump into her if you want to, but as you see, the referees have been fucking them the whole series. Or the lane to the rim is right. It just, I mean, it is parted like the Red Sea. It's parted like the Red Sea. 
or the, the Dead Sea, whatever sea that got parted in the Bible. Or pump fake, dribble, dribble, you're taking a free throw jump shot. Look at how open that middle is. Oh my God. Oh my God. I would even bench, I would even tell you this if the Fisa Collier just turned and rolled, she'd be wide open. Instead of popping all the way out to the corner. Right here, this is an easy pump. You pump fake this. John Cole Jones is flying at you. This is not even good position for shooting. She's at her left foot in front of her right foot. It's not a good shooting position. Get it in. She shot off the wrong foot. Again, you see she's flying at her. She's short on the shot. She's short on the shot. If I mean, all, all she had to do was pump fake and go right to the ring. They would have taken her head off. If she drives to him, they would have taken her head off. No, Look at this. The Liberty have the ball and don't call timeout. I mean, folks, this is basketball IQ. It's, this is bad hooping, man. This is not good ball. Not good. So let's jump back into this. We go to overtime. B-Bitch hits a three right off the tip. And you're looking at Courtney Williams, and she, you're supposed to be guarding Feebich, and you leave her wide open in the corner. Makes no sense. Why are you leaving her wide open in the corner? You weren't guarding anybody. So Courtney Williams is in the game, and she basically gives up a wide open three, which led off the which led off overtime and set the tone. And then Courtney Williams decides she wants to get back because Courtney Williams needs to be a star and, and, and all that. And ever since game one, where she was utter, utterly, absolutely great, since then she's been absolutely terrible. And today she was terrible. I think she was two for 14. Terrible. And kept on shooting. I mean, God bless, two for 14. She's Louise. Holy Lord. She shoots a 22-footer. Brick. Um, then, uh, da, 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 then Phoebich, uh, does she miss, she, Phoebich, uh, I think I said she misses, can't read my, I can't remember, read my own handwriting. Courtney Williams misses a layup. McBride gets a turnover on, um, on the Liberty, but then McBride turns the ball right back over. Now, Sabali steals it. So, Mc, Mc, this was a, this play bothered me because it's 63 60. Collier is cutting to the basket. Collier is cutting to the basket. McBride does not pass her the ball when she's wide open. Instead, Collier pops back out to the three-point line. And now she's being covered by Sabali, and she just throws the ball right to Sabali, and it's a turnover and goes for a layup, 65-60. Then McBride bricks a shot. McBride steals. She What looked like a clear path foul, but happened to not be because they're playing in New York and they're playing the Liberty. I thought that was a clear path foul. They made every reason to say that Sabrina Ionescu was ahead of her, even though Sabrina Ionescu was nowhere near her. She was so far to her left. She may have been a step ahead of her, but that was a clear path foul. That, that was a clear path foul. And they didn't call it. Of course they didn't call it because it was the other way. McBride then gets uh, gets fouled and makes two free throws. Uh, but before that, they turned the ball over on that possession where they, that steal happened for McBride. So there's this three-point game with 151. Charge called in Liberty, which is a miracle. And then there was a play with uh, Nafisa Collier, which really drove me crazy. She drives all the way to the rim, is at the rim, and she stops. What are you stopping for? Let me find that play for you. What are you stopping for? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. You're stopping. It, it, was, it, was, it was ridiculous, actually, in fact. Let me show you this play. Right here. For Nafisa College. Right here. But the recovery. Right here. What are you stopping for? What are you stopping for? Sabrina is in the restricted area. She cannot block your shot. Nobody here. The only person who can block your shot is out here, Rihanna Stewart. John Cole Jones ain't blocking your shot from over here. Sabali ain't blocking your shot from here. Sabrina ain't doing shit. 
If she goes at you, it's an and one. This is crazy. We it's talked she about stops. speed and how she pauses. Great block. I would say that was borderline foul. Uh, I don't know. It was a, it was close to being a foul, if you ask me. But I don't know nothing, apparently, nowadays in basketball. Because that looked like it could have been a foul. And Brianna Stewart and Niara Sagali. For Nafisa Collier, but the recovery. We've talked about fee and how she pauses that's a foul great block. cut that shit that's a foul her arm got her all over the arm that's a foul i i, I stand by what i said that's a foul you're not going to tell me that's not a foul no 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 way in hell let's i'm gonna i'm gonna still shot this for crap. nafisa collier but the recovery we've talked about fee and how she paused that's a foul you're not telling me that's a block shot that's a foul that's an absolute fucking foul her arm is hacking her across the arm. Yeah, she gets some ball. That's a foul. Bro, I, I, I. But again, I will say, why did you stop, Nafisa? Why did you stop? If you finish the play, you're going to draw a foul from one of these people. Someone's going to foul you. Hell, someone did foul you. They just didn't call it. Because you are you and you're not playing to the liberty. Um, Sabrina then misses another shot, 16 footer. Alana Smith then drops a pass from Courtney Williams under the basket. That would have been a layup. And um, again, Brianna Stewart travels again. They don't call it. Let me ask you about this one. Was this a travel? Here, let me pull this off real fast. Here we go. This is the play right here. This is 30 seconds left, and, it, and again, Grand Strip travels. They don't call it, but what's new? They don't call it. This is a travel again. And here's the problem. If Sabrina had made this shot, that would have been really bad because then it was you're benefiting again from another travel that was not called on Brianna Stewart. But here we go. Under 30 seconds to go. See the positioning? We have Sabali in the bottom corner. Sabali's down here. You got... Fee bitch over here, John Quell Jones and Brianna Stewart. Liberty by three. Jonescu. Here we go, Brianna. Watch the travel, folks. Who gives it up? That's a travel. That's a major travel. I mean, she took four steps before she put the ball on the ground. Clear travel. Clear travel. Stewart gives it back. And here, I mean, no. And look at what UNESCO did. She literally freaking fell on the ground to sit and have a fake foul call. She was looking for a phantom foul call. Again. But she bricked it again. And then you have the unfortunate end of the game, which is pretty much right here. They call timeout, whatever. It doesn't matter. Folks, I'm done. I, I, I've had enough. This is what they call basketball. I tell you right now, that was the, uh, who the hell was it? Who was the damn interviewing lady who said at the end that this was beautiful basketball in the interview? I, I, I almost gagged on myself. Holly Rowe. Holly Rowe said that, that was beautiful basketball. That was the worst bat. That was arguably the worst basketball game I've ever seen, which is supposed to be the high level of basketball. That was arguably the worst basketball I've ever seen. 67 62 in overtime in the WNBA finals, where the winning team shot 30.6%. Congratulations to John Quill Jones for winning MVP because thank God she was given that over Brianna Stewart and some fake made up trophy for Brianna Stewart to keep a narrative that Brianna Stewart's the greatest on earth. I walked away from this series realizing that Nafisa Collier could arguably be the number two player in the league behind Caitlin Clark. Although she missed a layup that taught that she missed a layup that cost her team the WMB championship. She all these other things, all these other things, fouls, no calls, travels, no travels, charge, no charge, whatever. If Nafisa Collier makes that layup with six and a half seconds to go, an open layup, there the champions and there'll be nothing the referees or the WNBA could have done about it but she left it on the table and of course they had a chance now to impact the game again and they did 
you have bad refereeing, you have bad basketball, you have bad IQ, you have a sport that is sitting here telling you how great it is, and they want you to grade them on a curve. I grade basketball. I was actually talking to Nick, and this is going to be a lengthy rant, but I was talking to Nick about this during the game, and he said, I said, and I said, Brianna Stewart sucks, right? Brianna Stewart sucks. Sabrina, Sabrina Ionescu sucks. Now, obviously, I'm being hyperbolic in a way, but I'm also being serious because I compare players to what I expect from players. Like, if you can't make layups, you don't belong in the league. If you are if you shoot 32.6% over a five-game series and you're the best player on your team and you're one of the three best players in the world, you must not be that good. And another one who's second team all WNBA who shot 29.6% from the field, you're really not that good. Caitlin Clark has a bad game in the first round against Connecticut, and people said she was terrible. Not me, but people. People said she was terrible as a basketball player because of that. People that hate her, obviously. What did she do the next game? She balled out. Sabrina Ionescu had had Sabrina Ionescu had one good game, and I wouldn't even call it a good game because it was the only game in which she didn't shoot more than ten shots, and she got praised for it. It was game two where they won by 15, and she was five of nine. Every other game, she stunk. The game that she hit the three-pointer to win it, she stunk. She just happened to hit the big shot. But she stunk for the game. For the duration of the game, she stunk. Four or five games that you absolutely stink. Brianna Stewart, same thing. Four or five games, she absolutely sucked. She had the one nine for 20 game, which even re- re- even that, she should have been better than that. But she had one game where she didn't completely suck. And, and the other four, she was terrible. And these are the two of two of the top 10 players in the, in the league. Please. It just shows you how far the WNBA is when it comes to talent. There is a talent gap that exists in this league that is why people weren't watching this shit. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if how many people would have watched this and Caitlin Clark not coming to the league this year? I don't believe it would have done. I think tonight's game probably did 1.5 million. It's the closeout game. Hell, hell, it may have done 2 million. It's a possibility. Although it was going against the New York Mets and the Dodgers in, in, the, in the playoffs as well as Sunday Night Football. But at the end of the day, this game itself, could have done two million because clearly people are showing more interest. But if this was your first time watching the WNBA tonight, you're never going to watch it again. You would never watch this again. This was some of the worst basketball I've ever seen. And these are the two best teams in the WNBA. And we have officials that don't know what they're doing, they make awful calls most of the game. I do not understand why they don't have NBA referees officiating this game. Why are the NBA officials not officiating the WNBA? Why do you need to have WNBA officials? Why can't we just have NBA officials? Being that there's women that officiate in the NBA too. So what's the problem? Why not have the men of the NBA officiate the WNBA? Your officiating might actually get better because these referees are absolutely horrible, horrible, horrendous. They shouldn't have jobs doing this. You get better officiating in travel basketball AAU games for 12-year-olds. If I'm the Feast of Collier, I'm I am I'm upset with myself because I missed the layup. But if I'm the Feast of Collier, I am disgusted with how this, this whole entire series got, got officiated. The fact that it matters, I did not watch their press conference yet, and I'm going to, and I hope she voices how bad the refereeing was. Because Sandy Brondello sure as shit had no problem bitching and moaning, complaining about how it was so unfair. Air in game four and how it was officiated. Well, Sandy, you got 25 free throws today to eight. So are you more happy or was it now unfair the other way, you fucking idiot? I hope Collier, I hope Cheryl Reed went off. I hope they went off because they got screwed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What did you think of this game if you watched it? I know what I thought. This is bad basketball. And I don't have much, and, and I'm thanking the Lord that I'm not gonna watch any more of this shit for the next 
six and a half, seven months, because I don't want to watch this shit anymore. It, it is it is tiresome. I'll talk about Caitlin Clark. I'll talk about some other things. And I'm sure Angel Reese will find a way to make herself important again because she had to go in there wearing her little cut in half jersey of Nafisa Collier and Brianna Stewart. Rather than just go dress like a normal person, she has to go get this like she's their mom and shit. Like who does that dumbass stuff? But she has to be seen and she has to make herself known. So she does that stupid shit. So I'm sure a lot of things to talk about. And I'm sure Ben and Ben and I will jump on this week at some point um, and do a live because we need to. Anyhow, go subscribe. Go subscribe. Come a member. Like, follow, pound that like button, hit that bell. Facts over feelings, baby. Come on now.